Hello everybody, happy Halloween. Our next camera is a Minolta A5. It dates from 1960. It was uh, the last non-metered A-series rangefinder uh, from Minolta. It has an Optiper Citizen MLT shutter. It's good for one second to one one thousandth of a second plus bulb. It's pretty fast for a 60 year old leaf shutter. This one has the lower spec lens available. It's a four element 45 millimeter Rocor TD. Uh, F stops from F2.8 to F22. They made a higher spec version. Um, it had a six element F2 lens, also in 45 millimeters. The front ring is the shutter speeds, and then the next ring in is the f stops. It's kind of nice. There is a depth of field scale on the barrel. A lot of times on old rangefinders, you just get a chart on the back. One thing that's interesting is the shutter moves these red numbers of the EV scale on the bottom, and then the aperture moves the index mark. And together, they make kind of a nifty exposure value calculator. So if you meter in your exposure value, and once you've got the EV, you can grab both rings and you are uh, cycling through all the different combinations uh, of that exposure value. The innermost uh, ring is focusing and it has this nice knob on the bottom, which is pretty easy to use with either hand. And the viewfinder is nice and bright. It's kind of orangey pink. There's not a lot. There's just the uh, frame line uh, for the 45 millimeter lens in here. There's no parallax marks, nothing. It's a meterless camera. You get the sync selector switch here for X sync or M if you're using flash bulbs. And then the PC sync socket here on the barrel as a cold accessory shoe. There was a mid 60s version of the A5. It was based on a different body. And it had a Sekosha shutter, which only went to 1 500th of a, of a second but it sported a hot shoe. So they went to a slower shutter and give you a hot shoe. There's also um, at this V mark here, there's a nine second self timer. These old uh, shutters are a little fussy. So I've been mostly keeping hands off with the self timers because if anything's going to jam up an old shutter, that's going to do it. There's this nifty film reminder on the back. It's just a circular dial here, and it's just a reminder. But that's kind of nice because there's no window or anything, and there's also not a place to put the end of your film box. So just spin this guy to whatever you have loaded, and that way you don't have to worry about remembering it. The back door opens um, with this latch at the left. The rewind crank does lift, but it just lifts to get the film cartridge prongs out of the way. It's kind of nice the way it folds away, um, but it's a little fiddly in use because it's not quite horizontal. And you have to hold the rewind button during the whole thing. So obviously the back would be closed, but then you're just cranking and cranking. It's not a big deal, but just a little bit fiddly. It's really easy to load. There's this nice slot in the take-up spool. You just put the, the film leader underneath there, and then it's got a little tooth to grab one of the lower sprocket holes. So once you got it in there, just tension it up, you're ready to go. The film counter, you manually set it. You spin it clockwise to the red dot after you've loaded your film, and then you just wind away two frames and then it's sitting at one. It's ready to go. I took this on a hike with us. Um, 
it's just a 24 roll, uh, 24 exposure roll of film, and I was bracketing like crazy because I wasn't sure about the shutter speeds or anything. But I got some really nice shots with this, so I'm happy with it. I'm gonna run roll of black and white through it. So I'll get that done, and I'll see you then.